hyperthyroidism we've already discussed thyroid gland and hypothyroidism in our previous presentation so this would be the third part under the same topic hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis is a clinical syndrome that results from exposure of the body tissues to excess of circulating free thyroid hormones thyrotoxicosis literally means toxicity due to excess of thyroid hormones all the tissues that contain thyroid receptors are affected hyperthyroidism affects females more than males and is usually associated with thyroid enlargement except in factitious hyperthyroidism the causes of hyperthyroidism can be enumerated as common causes which account for more than 95 percent of the cases less common causes accounting for about three to five percent of the cases and rare causes which account for less than one percent of the cases common causes of hyperthyroidism are graves disease toxic nodular goiter I have two presentations either as a multinodular or a solitary nodule less common causes of hyperthyroidism are thyroiditis drug induced and factitious or self-induced and rare causes of hyperthyroidism are pituitary or ectopic tsh and thyroid carcinoma talking about the pathogenesis of hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism develops insidiously the clinical signs and symptoms develop due to an accelerated basal metabolic rate stimulation of sympathetic system due to hypersensitization and compression due to enlarged thyroid the trachea esophagus recurrent laryngeal nerve may also be compressed it is noteworthy that every system of our body is affected in hyperthyroidism the clinical features of hyperthyroidism are goiter there can be a diffuse or nodular enlargement of the gland diffuse goiter indicates grave disease while nodularity indicates toxic nodular single or multiple goiter gastrointestinal symptoms such as weight loss in spite of good appetite diarrhea or stetoria vomiting cardiovascular symptoms like high resting pulse rate or sinus tachycardia a good volume pulse with white pulse pressure more than 60 millimeters of mercury exertional dyspnea arrhythmia with atrial fibrillation being the commonest of all neuromuscular symptoms such as nervousness and irritability restlessness psychosis tremors of hands muscular weakness mostly proximal dermatological symptoms such as perspiration wherein there is increased sweating or hyperhidrosis loss of hairs pretibial myxedema redness of palms reproductive symptoms such as menstrual irregularity amenorrhea is commonest abortions infertility loss of libido or impotence ophthalmological symptoms such as lid lag or lid retraction staring look white palpable fissures exophthalmos excessive watering of eyes diplopia that is double vision or ophthalmoplegia and other symptoms such as heat intolerance which is quite an important symptom excessive thirst or polydipsia outburst of anger fatigability and apathy graves disease is the most common thyroid disorder producing hyperthyroidism it is characterized by a triad of symptoms which are diffuse goiter exophthalmos and pretibial myxedema which differentiates it from other thyroid disorders it can occur at any age but is common between 30 to 50 years of age graves disease is considered to be an autoimmune disorder because of its association with other autoimmune disorders presence of circulating antibodies and lymphocytic infiltration of thyroid tissue normally in an autoimmune disorder antibodies destroy the thyroid tissue but this is an exception where the thyroid igg antibodies stimulate the thyroid to produce more hormone so how does this happen so let's recap the normal functioning of the gland the pituitary gland under the influence of drh produced by hypothalamus releases tsh this tsh goes on to bind with its receptor present on the thyroid cell this binding stimulates the thyroid cell to produce hormones when the thyroid hormones reach their plasma level a negative feedback control reaches the pituitary 
which inhibits the production of TSH further, thus regulating the production of thyroid hormones and maintaining their blood levels. Similarly, in case of Graves disease, autoantibody binds to the receptor, which are the TSH receptor on the thyroid cell and stimulate the cell to produce thyroid hormones. Unlike the normal condition, the negative feedback control is absent in case of Graves disease. Thus, this production of thyroid hormones continues unregulated, thus leading to an unregulated overproduction of thyroid hormones. The unique mechanism of stimulation of thyroid causes its diffuse enlargement as well as its hyperfunction. Genetic studies have shown the association of HLA, BA, DR3 and DR4 with Graves' disease, which indicate its genetic susceptibility to environmental factors. Exophthalmos is due to collection of retroorbital fluid and proliferation of fibroblasts, which lead to rise in pressure in retroorbital space, consequently pushing the eyeballs forward, whereas the pathogenesis of pretubal myxedema is not yet known. Clinical features of Graves' disease The four main features seen are diffuse goiter, exophthalmos or ophthalmopathy, pretubal myxedema or dermopathy and signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Diffuse goiter is diffuse enlargement of thyroid which may be about two to three times the normal volume. The gland is hypervascular and a thrill or brit may be heard over the gland. Exophthalmos or proptosis is seen in half of the patients with Graves' disease at presentation. The signs and symptoms of ophthalmology are the symptoms include staring look, exposure of cornea, wherein the whole cornea becomes visible, watering of eyes due to defective drainage of tears, blurring of vision. The signs of ophthalmopathy are lid lag, diplopia or double vision, exposure keratitis, diminished visual acuity. Lid lag is the common and characteristic sign. It is demonstrated by asking the patient to look downward and then suddenly upwards. Normally, there is synchronization of lids and eyeballs movement, but in Graves disease, the lid lags behind the movements of the eyeballs, hence called lid lag. Pretibial myxedema, wherein a patch of hyperkeratosis is formed in front of anterior aspect of leg or tibia. The patch is bluish or pinkish in color with growth of hairs. Investigations of Graves disease, both T3 and T4 are elevated in majority of the cases. TSH is low or may become undetectable. Iodine-131 uptake is increased, that is about more than 35% at 5 hours. TRAB, that is thyroid receptor antibodies, may be increased by more than 7 units. Serum cholesterol is low. Ultrasound of thyroid shows diffuse goiter. And EKG show tachycardia, arrhythmias and STT changes. Treatment of Graves' disease, there are three modalities of treatment for hyperthyroidism due to any cause, the choice of which depends on the age of the patient, the size of the goiter, and whether the disease is recurrent or have frequent relapses. The mode of treatment are drug therapy, wherein antithyroid drugs and beta blockers are given. Antithyroid drugs are the initial treatment of all hyperthyroid patients, and during pregnancy, the drug given is propylthiouracil. They are not to be given in lactating mothers wherein carbamazole is given or in hypersensitivity. The next mode of treatment is radioactive ablation or destruction of thyroid by radioactive material and finally surgery that is subtotal thyroidectomy. Under the medical management for the control of symptoms, beta blockers or calcium channel blockers are given. They are to be used with caution in case of asthmatic patients. And once the patient becomes euthyroid, these drugs are to be discontinued. For the control of hyperthyroidism, initial treatment of all cases is done with carbimazole, started with a 15 to 20 mg dose for the initial three weeks. In case of pregnant patients, the drug of choice is propylthiouracil given up in a dose of about 100 to 150 milligram every eight hours. Propylthiouracil is contraindicated in case hypersensitivity develops and in lactating patients 
in case of lactating mothers carbimazole is indicated Remission is seen in about 50% of the cases after 6 to 18 months of treatment. Radioactive iodine therapy using potassium iodide is indicated in case of patients above 40 years of age and in case of recurrence following surgery. They are to be used with caution in case of pregnant women and mothers who are desirous of having child. The patient becomes euthyroid or hypothyroid in 75% of cases after 4 to 12 weeks and finally surgical management which is indicated in case of recurrences and relapse cases or in case of a large goiter or if the patient is less than 40 years of age and in cases with poor drug compliance associated complications are laryngeal nerve palsy hypoparathyroidism and bleeding the patient becomes euthyroid seen in 75 to 80 percent of cases 15 percent of cases become hypothyroid and five percent cases may lead to thyrotoxicosis and five percent remain in thyrotoxicosis rarely thus long-term follow-up is essential to recognize these late complications management of ophthalmology majority of patients do not require any treatment for symptomatic patients, methyl cellulose is used for artificial tears to avoid dryness of cornea. Protective glasses and prednisolone 60 mg daily is used to reduce retroorbital edema. In severe cases, orbital decompression may be done. Management of dermopathy. Majority of the patients do not require treatment. In severe cases, local beta-methazone ointment or triamcinolone injection may be used. So this was all about hypothyroidism. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.